frames pretty well. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty good. Here we can uh, ring like this too. I don't know if you remember how handy this camera is. I tried it. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. That's what I wanted to do. So, yeah, this will work out good. Hey guys, I'm Colin Caneva. This is Craig Spilker. Old Green Plains, some exciting updates we can't wait to show you. And uh, live from inside the guts of Silverhawk Aviation. What is that called when you, is it like the confines or something? Or the very deep friendly. Deep in the depths of the, but like, I don't know in, if the, in, the, in the bowels of Silverhawk. Well, bowels is an appropriate word, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, this, is, uh, this is where all the magic happens this too. Is make planes like old Butch here 6-2 Tango, well better number one, get them back oh, yeah. up and flying, but also do some of these amazing repairs and upgrades yep. that we're lucky enough to have uh, been a part of, right? Right, so. right. Uh, <clears throat> so what did we do? We just got done three, uh, what, two months yep. of upgrades to 6-2 Tango. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Ryan at Flight Flix and his team really helped us out on this one. We outfitted the plane interior and exterior with sound and cameras. Uh, we'll walk you guys around. We did a 360 camera. Um, we've got a more permanent mount than what's on the plane currently right now uh, coming, but what we're using right now actually works. We, we, we've tried it, works great. Um, we've got two wing mounted cameras and a tail mount camera. Yep. Lots of angles. Lots of angles. So we're gonna Every get you guys angle. the best shots of and cool. Best. I mean, it's stuff like the 360 camera. Yeah. Uh, that's like new technology that I mean is really cutting edge. Yeah. When you talk about getting it up into a plane, I don't know how many people are really doing this. Right. Right. View. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I found out about the 360 camera actually from uh, 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 Kevin Quinn, and okay, I reached yeah, out to yeah. him, and he told me what he was doing. He told me how he mounted it. Uh, the aviation—that's what's cool about the aviation community. They're gonna fire up a plane in here right now, so uh, we're gonna cut for a second. All right, I'm here with my friend Scotty Long, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's been a hell of a hell of a project, huh? It's been a fun project, so uh, from start to finish, it's just kind of neat to see. Uh, I love these older, the vintage aircraft. They don't build them any different, and, and these are actually straighter than the new ones coming out of the factory. Really? So yeah, that's cool. So it was a fun project. So uh, Scotty Long uh, is the head mechanic at Silverhawk. Uh, the chief inspector. Chief inspector. Yep. So we're talking to the dude who, who from start to finish, when, when we brought this plane in, mm -hmm. you guys had a checklist that was about 10 pages long. Yep, uncomfortably long. Uncomfortably <laughs> long. Uh, what, about two months, wasn't it? Uh, for which? The... Or, 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 no, about a month and a half that we, we, we took it out of service. Oh uh, yeah, it was probably, yeah, it's close to, yeah, close to two months, I would say, uh -huh. from start to finish going between engineering and and uh, getting everything else arranged uh, to get the aircraft uh, brought back up to speed and talk, safety. talk to us a little bit about that what uh, what was uh, what were some of the major things that well, we did being the first annual uh, for this aircraft that we uh, did you know you're not 100 percent comfortable with anything till you go through it and you get your squawk lists and everything put together so we did that uh, found out what we needed to repair t to bring it up to a standard that i feel comfortable put to Put my family in it. Uh huh. So we did that. Got everything, almost dominoes plus taken care of. Uh, we ended up uh, replacing the uh, firewall uh, with a, another firewall, and it's kind of rare to have two firewalls flying in, or a fl one firewall flying in two different airplanes. Uh huh. But it was pretty neat. But uh, all the river, it, uh, again to the the older aircraft, the people that put these together. My uh, grandma and my. Uh, uh, Great aunt uh, built me 29s down in Wichita. Really? In uh, World War II, and my mom went to high school in Wichita. But uh, their rivet lines are perfect. Uh, we had like just very few rivet holes that did not line up. Wow. And this is a, a firewall out of a different aircraft. Okay. And this stringer here, long on right here, ties the uh, upper right hand engine mount right here. Uh, you can see the rivet line just lined up perfectly. Wow. And this is out of a different aircraft too. But it just attests to the the quality back then. If you 
if we took uh, something out of uh, one of the newer Cessnas and tried to put it in a like model, even if it was built, you know, one airplane ahead, I sure. guarantee it wouldn't fit. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, <coughs> so we did we did firewall. We uh, replaced the firewall. Uh, uh, of course, reattached uh, all the uh, uh, nose landing gear fittings. Um, we replaced the uh, inner tunnels because those were bent, mm -hmm. and the uh, inner floorboards. And when we had the instrument panel apart, uh, we uh, I supported the uh, radio rack. Uh, we, uh, so we tied that in, uh, uh, tightened all that up. Uh, uh, this is just uh, for looks only. This mm -hmm. is disconnected. Uh, we put an avionics cooling fan in. Oh, cool. So, because you don't want to get any water uh, right. in a, in integration into the avionics. And this was designed for the old school stuff, which I love. I'm an analog guy. Uh huh. But uh, it's, and also to bring it up in accordance with the STC standards or the requirements, it, it needed to have a cooling fan. When, so <clears throat> I, I was out here one day and you guys had this thing down to basically its exoskeleton, yeah. if you call it. Yeah, yeah I, still, um, I still see this airplane like an x ray. I yeah. see everything that we did just <laughs> looking through it. So cool. Uh, so, talk to me about when, when you had it apart, you guys found some corrosion. Uh, yeah, there's some uh, uh, intergranular corrosion. Um, you were in the Navy? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was in the Marine Corps, the, yeah. the, other, the better side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, corrosion controls, uh, you know, that's one thing they taught us when we were aboard ship, uh, especially with the Harriers. Sure. We were always doing corrosion control. Sure. So I, I, I've got an eye for it. it. It does have a little intergranular corrosion, surface corrosion, but other than that, it's pretty clean. Uh-huh. So. so, but there was some corrosion on some control surfaces yep. that we had we to replace. We found uh, corrosion on the... Uh, Elevators. Um, this uh, right-hand elevator, Jordan Springer, the guy's uh, phenomenal, sheet metal guy. But uh, we reskinned uh, the upper and lower. These are all brand new skins on the right-hand elevator. Wow! So and it tur turned out beautiful. Did some aileron work and some flap work as well. Yeah, we cleaned up corrosion on the ailerons. The right-hand flap is off a different aircraft. That's a, a salvaged uh, 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 flap. Uh huh. Um, had some damage to that, but that's replaced. And then also clean corrosion on the, the left hand elevator. And <coughs> kind of interesting, so to match the paint that was older, they had to mix in some different colors. Yeah, so they would yeah, look a little bit flattener. And yeah. I, I, I like it. I well, like, it looks I like, amazing. I like the old school look. Uh, nothing personal, but I still love the old Cessnas. The, yeah. the fastback's perfect. The only thing that would make it kick more for me is if it had a straight tail. Right, right. All oh, those are amazing. Yeah. A lot of my friends have those, and uh, we, uh, we we like to jab each other a little bit. So, but I'd much rather have one of these <coughs> than, than a brand new airplane. I just, you know, love to refurbish it and throw new avionics and uh, engine whatever you got to do to it and have fun with it. So. The other thing that I like that you guys did is, and and we'll get um, so, but when you did all the camera work. Uh, between and, and we'll talk about that because the partnership and the relationship between Old Green Plane, Silverhawk, and Flight Flicks, uh, Ryan and his team, you guys, it was just an amazing. It, I, I just the project was so smooth. But one of my favorite things is when you look at the panel now, how how you guys retrofitted knobs to control camera camera mounts and 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 power supplies. That aren't too many of them out there. No, it's it's a lot of fun. I uh, am an amateur radio operator as well, and I like to build vintage radios, uh -huh. and fix vintage stuff, and I like uh, the old Heathkit stuff. I always want to keep it original. I'll sure. go and buy flathead screws and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Because the last thing you want to see in a in a vintage radio that's refurbished is a uh, you know a, a Phillips, Phillips <laughs> right. head screw or something like that. That damn Phillips. Yeah. So uh, we took uh, serviceable switches that you had that weren't used uh -huh. and repurposed them. So yeah, that's just, just so to cool. keep, the, keep the vintage look and it just, it's, it's just the right, right way to do it. So why don't you show us some of the uh, camera mounts that you guys, uh, well, we can start right here. Um, and everything's pa uh, powered off the bus. It's got a circuit breaker protection, um, at, and that goes to the switch of course. Uh -huh. And then, uh, each camera has a t two amp inline fuse also to protect it at the camera okay so and there's that, power supplies backed behind every yep. one of these mounts yep correct? yep every mount up here has got a uh, dc converter takes it from the uh, 12 volts down to the 5 volt inline voltage and i thought about just putting a, a power supply a, a single one but the voltage drop 
five volts, uh, anything over like 60, uh, it's just not going to be enough. So sure. we decided to go with the individual power su supplies located to each side. And they are mounted to the panels and flight fix. I designed all the uh, the mounts and submitted, or gave it to flight fix and the DER and they gave it to Amanos Dominos Plus to it. But oh, cool. Power supplies are mounted at each camera with a power port that's weather protected that flight fix produces. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. And uh, Ryan sent these to me for free. Oh, cool. And we're, this is the first airplane to have on it. So. Really, really. Yeah. And so uh, Flight Flix does all of the aluminum, it's aircraft aluminum uh, mounts. Um, all the guts were aluminum. Yeah. Like nothing plastic, so it, it's, it's going to last. And, uh, we'll walk over to the other side. Yep. The exciting thing as we're walking is when, you know, the issue we used to have when we would video would be trying to mesh up all of the footage. And so when we were designing this system uh, between you guys and the Flight Flix team, you came up with a way to pull a switch, everything powers up at once and starts recording. Uh, we, we did go ahead and go with uh, Garmin cameras. Very excited about that. We, the reason we did that is there, you know, we had a lot of trouble with overheating uh, with, the, with the GoPro inside. So we do mount a GoPro outside, but just hooking everything up with the with the garments on the inside a lot easier to work with and then uh, and, and power up and start recording to us it just the garments made a, a better choice at this at, for this juncture but um, again a couple more flight flix uh, mounts yep and uh, these are this is all flight fix everything external here um, the only thing I designed was the uh, actual mounts for the power supplies uh -huh. and uh, but uh, we got DER approvals for everything structural, uh, electrical, and got an electrical load analysis to make sure that we weren't exceeding the aircraft's, uh, uh, you know, alternator output. Sure. So, and that's one other mod we put on here. We took out, or the generator, took that off and put uh, an STC to alternator on the aircraft. So it's more reliable and stable. But these are full. Uh, 360 uh, articulating. I mean, you can put them where, whatever direction you want. So. Uh huh. And this new mount is really cool too. Yeah. So they're actually building one that that'll be a lot more stable, and it'll go. So with that mount, it'll be able to go frontwards and backwards, hmm. so we can mount the 360 behind us. That's really cool. Um, the one thing I'm going to change is move this over to the pilot side, hmm. um, and and. I think I'll get a little better angle, and and I'd rather see myself anyway on video than <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, but uh, then also inside, we check it out too. We uh, new headliner. Yep. Also replace the headliner and uh, replace the uh, overhead speaker um, uh, in the aircraft, and just uh, went through and cleaned out all the old wiring, uh -huh. the unused wiring that was just in there. I think Jordan told me there was. Uh, Tell me how many pounds there was. Uh, I hate yeah, probably between five, ten pounds of just wiry. That's what know, I thought he said, around seven pounds. Yeah, so it was right just, in there. And we tidied everything up, uh, cleaned out uh, any gunk underneath the floorboards, and um, also put uh, all brand new uh, sound deadening or soundproof uh, all on the interior up in here. Brand, uh, there's a brand new firewall blanket on the inside. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's all squared away right now. Wow. Uh, replaced the brake hoses since we were in there. You know, they're probably in there from the original. Sure. So I sure. we're in there, let's just replace them, replace the brake hoses. Yeah, that is. Uh, well, I flew it last weekend and it flies like a brand new plane. Well, and Gene, Gene made the comment that this is the newest 182 at, uh, on the ramp. It just, you can't tell it from the outside. So. No, and I love the old spring gear as a pilot myself. Mm -hmm. I used to fly an old 172 spring gear with a six cylinder Continental. They're just good airplanes. And we just balanced the propeller for you, so it yeah. should be a lot smoother. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. So that, that will help the avionics as well. Well, Scotty, I really appreciate all the work you and your guys did, Ben and Jordan. Uh, it's, and it, it's been a pleasure. It was a, uh, I love these kind of projects. I, uh, love, I love to restore airplanes, fix them up, modify them. So. It, it, it was a, a fun project. So, look look forward to seeing you guys uh, succeed. So, yeah, man. And uh, so, Scotty G Long on Instagram, follow him. The dude's an avid bicyclist, former Marine, uh, everything aviation, all things cool. It's Scotty Long. I mean, that's the guy. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.